sometimes as a musician, paying your dues is what you do. You have to. There's just something about it. You have to know what it's like to go through trenches and go through different clubs and go through different experiences. This story is about a place in Northeast Georgia that I was just reminded of on YouTube because a flash of deliverance, the movie came across and it had the little kid that played banjo. This kid's name was Billy Redding. The reason I know this is because I played at the Sundance. I, at the time, I thought this was the worst gig ever. I did. I'm in college, I am bulletproof, but goodness gracious, the band I was playing with was kind of looking for work, and once again, I had a buddy of mine playing with me, and me and him were in this thing, and he was kind of part fronting it, and I was singing in the back, and everybody sang, except for uh, the organ player, and he sang a little bit. Maybe I'll tell that story, it's part of the same place, the Sundance was owned by these two people that were just extremely nice and happened to be friends with the guy that ran this band that we were playing with. This was an R&B review band. These are show bands that I've always kind of been a part of. Entertainers in the industry is what this is. This is entertainment. And uh, we didn't have a gig coming up for a while. It was going into Christmas or something. The leader of this band gets called up by these two people that own this place and said, hey, Watch y'all come and play here. They made an event out of it. Now, it's kind of neat to be at the, at the, and I've kind of talked about it before, but being at the forefront of a movement. In music, it's really neat. It's happened to me a few times. Once with this band in this club, it was their moment like that where what they were doing just started blowing up and the crowds just started getting bigger and bigger and the night was huge. And there is a real market in being a professional musician at club level because the money is absolutely better than any road gig. <laughs> it's strange. It's a little little different, you know, getting asked how your chicken wings, how's your steak? And it makes me miss playing in the club world. It makes you miss playing that sort of thing or, you know, going out on tour. It's just different, but there's a way to play where you can do pretty well. Uh, you know, playing what needs to be played. You get to play Brown Eyed Girl a lot. <laughs> and I've had to play it, and I've had to sing it a lot. And I've had to play, I think, every single instrument on that song. I've had to play somewhere in a band sometime with somebody. We're at this club in Northeast Georgia. We get called. He says, it'll be a fun time. Let's, let's do this. Let's have fun. And I'm in. I'm 20, probably 3 years old, 22 I'm ready for a good time. My buddy's the same. He's ready for a good time. So we drive up there and meet these guys. These guys are a lot older than us. We get to this club and we, it is up mountain roads. The reason the story comes up with the deliverance uh, thing I saw with Billy Redding, Billy Redding was the bar back at the club that we were playing at. He was a little off. He was, but it, oh my gosh, so nice. Could he play banjo? Everybody asked him that. He learned just enough to kind of play. He was not the kid in the in the movie at all. He was just playing the character. It was his claim to fame, and they had pictures all over the wall and him signing it, but he was the bar back. He was a really nice dude, and it was always fun. They had a unique bar, and it was lots of beer tubs and, you know, that sort of thing. This place was in the hills of northeast Georgia. Hills, I say. I think this place is called Tallulah Gorge. It's a huge canyon out of Minecraft that I remember as a kid seeing some dude walk a tightrope wire across in the 70s that I was like, whoa. And I've never seen it, but later on when we played this club, I got to finally see this crazy V-shaped gorge. We show up and the place is starting to get packed. We are having a ball. The, the band is me and my buddy, uh, the bass player, an organ player, and uh, this cat we've talked about before, John Ed. Hey. So, and that's funny, that story kind of goes back to the Sundance. Golly, it's so funny to think about this stuff. I haven't thought about this in years. So, we're playing. It is a rocking good time, and it becomes so big after that first night that they want us back a lot. We become a small house band. The crowds get crazy. The place is packed. We can't even get to the beer in the back anymore. 
staying on stage is kind of the safest place for us or try to get out and there's only one front door and you got to go out it so you got to go past everybody oops snares you know we could go out to the the van or the camper well it's a kind of a little tour bus that this van had we would you know duck down inside and we could just kind of hang out and hide out you know drink beer or, you know do whatever you know have a good time and everybody was just partying and it was so hot and loud but over time this band in a different form or another has played this club this club is not around anymore but they have played this club with different uh people doing the frontman stuff but my buddy and i also play horns like i think i play trombone and he played uh sax so he grabbed an alto I grabbed a uh, my trombone and we went up there one weekend in college just to go because that place became such a wild party. But when we got there, I was scared to death. I was not used to uh, this because I'm in college. I I am I think my third year at Georgia. But goodness gracious, these people were so nice. They were not afraid to tell you if they didn't like something. It, they were up front they didn't mind it, it was neat to see the the interaction with people my buddy and i went back and just said hey we're gonna play horns one night so we jumped up on stage and played all night just to watch the spectacle of what was going on we had already left the band i called him up and he's like hey dude let's go play some horns i'm like okay so i grabbed my old trombone from high school and here we go up the mountains to go into this party we get there and it is a party T, my goodness, they it is built up, it is huge. This band had a little stick. There's always like five guys doing this thing, and part of the stick was the bass player would hand over his bass to the guitar player, and he would start working the mic, walking out and talking to everybody. He was a great ringmaster. He was. This club, this is where this started. We would play, it was the Otis Day and the Night's version of Shout by the Isley Brothers. Goodness gracious, it was great just because Animal House and all that. He would go out and he would talk to people, get all down real low, and I'm singing this thing in the back, playing drums and singing this. All of a sudden, they want to yell, Gator! And everybody flops on the floor and it is on. But it wasn't just on. These, <laughs> the, the patrons of the bar that were at this show of the female persuasion seemed to dive at my man on the floor that's doing the gator. This guy is easily 60 years old. Just, he has to take the full brunt of these women jumping at him. And we're holding our horns going, my God, what's going on? This is wild. This is, it was starting to get wild when we were barely playing. And we started switching instruments, and he would play drums, and I'd go play guitar in front of the thing for a while. We were just silly, having a good time. What is going on? And these women are diving at him, and I asked one of the guys, I said, is this normal? They said, it's been doing this for a while. Goodness gracious. It was wild. And then, all of a sudden, the organ player off his keyboard with his floor pedals. <laughs> that was crazy. Just don't use four pedals. <laughs> he comes over and he gets out there and next thing you know he lays on the ground and my goodness he was a big muscular cat and just did his thing hauling that big old organ around. Crazy. And the Leslie. God, Leslie sounded gorgeous. These women went diving for my man. And they did. And oh my god, it was crazy. And nobody gave a care about anything it was a party everybody was having fun and this band had built up a a thing and they kind of had you know later on they had to kind of quit playing there and then the club ended up shutting down for something but goodness gracious i swear i thought that was the scary scariest thing ever when we walked into that club and then the last time i walked into that club i thought that was one of the scariest things ever and we could not get out to really get outside and we brought uh, some of our college roommates with us because they needed to be a part of this. They needed to see Billy Redding. They needed to see the whole thing, and they did. We got there early enough that we got to sit and talk with him. But they filmed that movie, Deliverance, right there. That's where they did it, and that was the bar that the, all the cast and crew of that crazy movie 
went to after filming those nut scenes. That's what was going on. So the pictures are everywhere in the fall. But it was a strange place. It was called the Sundance. And, you know, you think it's the worst gig ever. But it's sometimes you look back and you go, it was amazing. And these people absolutely loved what you brought to their town. Because there was nothing like it. And the lines were crazy. And parking was nuts trying to just get in. And it was absolutely a super fun time. <laughs> It was. Ollie, they just jumped right on that poor guy and just... Oh, oh, it happens, it happens. Goodness, but jumping on up on stage, that's another story. 